This is Dr. Stewart from Timonium Foot and Ankle Center, and I'd like to spend some time discussing hammer toe deformities and toe deformities in general. These are very common conditions that come into our office, and patients come in all the time asking, do I have a hammer toe, or what's wrong with my toe? Why is my toe bent? To be very clear, just because your toe is bent or contracted is another term for bent, does not mean anything that is wrong with your toe, and it doesn't mean that it has to be painful. These are deformities that are caused by muscle imbalance. Let's understand the anatomy here so we can have a better understanding of what's going on in the foot. So I'm gonna pull an x-ray up here of a foot and I'm gonna show a picture of an x-ray. And what I'd like to go through is just the anatomy of the foot. And if you look on this x-ray here, you can see that there are five toes and the big toe has two bones, one, two. And this is the proximal and distal bones. And the little toes have three bones, the proximal, the middle, and the distal. Sometimes the fifth toe, in some patients, there's only two bones, but in this case, this has three bones. And there are two joints within the smaller toes, toes two, three, and four, and five. You have the proximal interphalangeal joint and the distal interphalangeal joint. Now, toe deformities are uh, named based on the level of where the contracture is. Contracture means the bend of the toe. So when there's a bend here, we call this a hammer toe. When there's a bend of the proximal joint, we call that a hammer toe. When there's a bend of the distal joint only, we call that a mallet toe. And when there's a bend of both of these at the same time, where both are bent, we call that a claw toe. And we're gonna look at another picture here where you can see that a little better. This is a clinical picture where you can see this contracture of the proximal joint and the distal joint, and that would be a claw toe. And this is a contracture of the proximal joint only, and that would be called a hammer toe. And if the bend was just here only, we would call that a mallet toe. Another common finding that happens with toe deformities is the toes can actually rub. And in this particular patient who I operated on, these toes were scrunched together where this toe was contracted and bent, the fourth toe was contracted and bent, and the fifth toe underlapped it. You'll commonly see toes underlapping each other. Toes act as a natural, what we call buttress. They try to prevent each other from moving over. And when one toe pops up, you'll commonly see the second toe pop up. The big toe will drift this way and that's where you can get crossover toes. So these toe deformities are very common. And if you look at another picture from the side, you can get a better appreciation for the contracture of the toes. You can see this patient has a hammer toe of the fifth toe and mallet toe of these other toes where there's bending of the distal joint. And you can see the bending, you can see how the fourth toe is underlapping. And then here's another picture of a patient who has uh, a hammer toe deformity um, with a, a hammer toe deformity here and also has a bunion deformity. So I think it's, it's um, uh, pretty clear that these deformities cause changes of the skin. And, and sometimes these cause what we call hypo or hyperpigmentation of the skin. And they can also cause hyperkeratosis, which is a buildup of callus. And what's ultimately happening is when patients are wearing shoes, the toes are rubbing on the top. So I, you've heard me maybe use the term in some of my other videos about the sandwich effect. The sandwich effect is where you have a piece of bone, which is the joint, and you have a shoe, which is uh, uh, the, the other, which is the bread. So in this analogy, the bone and the shoe are the bread, and then you have the soft tissue, which is the meat, and it just gets squished in between, and it rubs and it hurts. And that's really the, the key is that these cause pain. You get a lot of people coming in with a foot that looks like this, and they just don't like the way that it looks. And we do not recommend, I do not recommend any sort of foot surgery for anything that does not hurt. You, know, you walk on your feet, you use your feet a lot, and you don't want to create something that's non-painful into something that is painful, especially when you walk on them. I had a consultation a few weeks ago with a nice young lady who was about 25 years old, and when she was 19 years old, she underwent bilateral, meaning both feet, a bunion repair and hammer toes, because she didn't like the way her feet fit into a shoe. And because of that, she ended up having these surgeries 
And unfortunately, she suffered from a lot of pain in her toes and continues to have pain. And, and, and honestly, I don't even know if there's much that I'm gonna be do, able to do to help her because she wanted to try to undergo more surgery to correct this, but quite frankly, she already had surgery and there's this is just, she's got chronic pain and swelling. Now, we do a lot of hammer toe surgery in the right setting in patients that have failed conservative care, patients that have tried shoe gear modification and done all of the things that we recommend. And generally speaking, hammer toe surgery is very successful or toe surgery for that matter is very successful. But just like any surgery, there are risks involved. And if you don't get an optimum result, you can have pain. And that's the reason I would advise against having any sort of elective toe procedure. We get requests all the time. I must get 10 requests a week uh, on an online submission or a phone call to the office. Does Dr. Stewart perform toe shortening surgery or fix my toes because I don't like the way they look? And the answer is no. I do not do that. I would not recommend that. I do not think that the benefit outweighs the risk because you want to have pain before you do an operation. So the main treatments from a conservative standpoint for hammer toe and toe deformities is keeping pressure off of the toes or off of the painful areas. And we can accomplish this by wearing shoes that have a nice toe box, a nice depth to it, wearing supportive shoes, shoes with inserts or custom orthotics that give proper support, because these deformities are generally caused by overpowering of certain muscles. There are multiple causes of these deformities. They can be congenital in nature, meaning they were passed on for your grandmother, your grandfather, your aunt, your uncles. Uh, they may have them and you may see a family history of this. But you want to prevent progression of these by preventing irritation of these. And that comes down to wearing the proper shoes, wearing the proper support, avoiding barefoot walking, which promotes muscle imbalance, which causes these deformities. Any calluses or corns associated with some of these deformities, you can get corns on the top of the toes where there's rubbing. Sometimes when the toes are pushing down so much, they cause calluses under the bottom of the foot. That can be the result of a painful hammer toe. They should be shaved down, pads that go over the toes. There's little sleeves that you can slide over the toe to cushion. Those are all conservative options. You can use Tylenol, Motrin if needed, as long as there's no contraindications, ice and elevate the foot. And if it gets, and toe spacers in between the toes, and if it gets to the point where you can no longer tolerate your pain, or you can no longer wear shoes comfortably, and I don't mean your pointy Tory Burt shoes, or your Prada shoes, or your Louis Vuitton shoes, or whatever shoes it is, or the shoes that my wife likes to jam her feet into. If you can't comfortably wear normal everyday shoe gear, and you're having pain, or a combination of those two, then surgical repair is something that's reasonable. During surgery, we generally will try to fuse these joints most of the time. I'm gonna show an X-ray of a surgery. Uh, this patient actually had some surgery recently and I'm gonna show the X-ray where uh, we did the surgery and we corrected the hammer toe. Uh, we also corrected the bunion in this case. But if you look at the hammer toe, we actually took these bones and we put them together and we fused the bones, we put a little implant in there. A lot of times we'll use wires that will stick out of the foot for about four to six weeks after the operation. Uh, you can see the bunion is nice and corrected as well. And surgical repair of hammer toes can be very uh, beneficial. You certainly have to control swelling and do the recovery the right way. Um, but know that there are a lot of good conservative treatment options for hammer toes, and if hammer toes don't feel better or don't get better and you fail conservative care, surgical options are always available to fix these deformities and toe deformities for that, uh, for, for that matter. So if you have hammer toes or toe deformities that are bothering you and you'd like to learn more about, simply fill out the form on this page to request a consultation or call the office and we'll be happy to get you scheduled. Thank you.